So yeah, you yeah. might be surprised to see me in black and white, and <laughs> slides are in black and white as well. I thought, you know, it's a it's a low tech uh, thing that I'm taking as an example. So why not look low tech? And it you know shows my age as well. So I think it's probably useful. Um, so yeah, I'm I work for Adobe in a attached. <laughs> administratively attached to the Basel office. Nobody's going to the Basel office currently, as you can imagine. So, uh, but I've been working remotely forever, I would say, for a very long time, at least um, almost, I would say 30 years probably. So, and I've been studying these things. You, you might have seen some of my other talks on the topic. So this one is a brand new one. You're being treated to the beta version of this, of this talk about moving house. Um, I don't know how it works. It's probably different in different cultures, but in, in Switzerland where I live, it's very common when you move house to ask friends to come and help. You know, you gather a team of friends and you improvise uh, the thing and, and it tends to work pretty well. And I, I've done that a number of times, obviously. And um, I thought there's many parallels between successfully organizing a moving day. Usually we do that on one day, you know, we prepare, then the friends come for just one day and then you make a big effort and you move the whole stuff. And I realized that organizing this successfully, that there's lots of parallels between that and the asynchronous collaboration that we need to do now, especially with these times of uh, COVID. If I can switch my slides, yes. So they, I think there are many parallels between these activities and that's what we're going to, to discuss in this talk. First, obviously, <laughs> you need to make the decision to move and it's a big decision. You know, any change that you take, you, have to, you make implies some risk. Where, where you are is often you're okay. You think, okay, maybe the new thing is better, but there's going to be things that are not as good or initially not as good and you need to work on them. So it's, uh, you know, first you, you make need to make the decision and the parallel with our collaboration or software projects is that you need to define the project's vision. Where is it that we're going? <laughs> In the moving house case, if people bring your furniture to the wrong place, it's not very useful. So th this is, with moving is pretty useful, it's pretty easy, you know, you define where you go, but still you need to, to have a cl very clear vision of your project. When is it going to happen? How are you going to set it up? So this is the equivalent of clearly defining the project's vision. And then um, you might be a bit afraid. Uh, uh, this is this looks a bit like one of our moves. So uh, I have a family with uh, three kids, and I've been uh, because I've been working home. We had the office. I had the office at home and stuff. And on one of our moves, we had 160 of these boxes uh, to move our stuff, uh, and that that's a bit scary when you think about it. It's a lot of work. So you know, but no guts, no glory. You have to. Go, go for it and take some risks and make some effort and, uh, and you know, and you hope you'll be successful and, and you, you do what it takes to be successful. You don't just hope. So there's also lots of similarities here between embracing projects that might be, might seem a bit too big or too complicated or just, you know, just above the level where you're comfortable. And that's, uh, there's lots of rewards uh, associated to that. So then once you have decided that you want to move, once you have overcome the fear of doing it, uh, you need to prepare. And uh, anticipation, preparation, preparation is, a, is a big part of being successful, exactly as in a software project. You need to think, you know, how, how are things going to happen? Maybe mentally go through the steps and, uh, you know, are we going to have the right things when we arrive at a new place and stuff? So before your team starts working, uh, you need to to be serious about the the preparation that uh, that uh, you'll be doing. So for for your move, you will invite friends, and actually you invite the right friends. You know you know you know your folks, you know your friends. You know uh, some people talk a lot and they don't do much. Others m might not be in a good shape to do a move. You know if they if they have a you know back problems or. Uh, uh, yeah, it might, maybe they would, they want to come and help you in a different way, come clean up the old flat after you move, or th there's many other things you can do. But for this big day, you need the right team. And assembling the right team is very important, exactly as in a software project. You know, in open source, it's cool because there's this self-selection. Usually people start being useful, 
and then you realize that they are adding value to the project and you, you integrate them in your project. In this case, you have to in advance select the right people, but because they are the, your friends, you know them. So you can, you know, you can uh, assemble hopefully the right team but being careful to have the right mix of people in your, in your team, right number as well. Another part of the preparation that we all love when, when we're moving is to put things in boxes. Hopefully your boxes are a bit smaller than these, than the ones we see here on the picture. And it's actually very important to have the right size of boxes. You know, if your boxes are too, are too big or too heavy and that the one person cannot carry them, it's much less convenient to organize the stuff. So you will have some big things to move, maybe some larger furniture, but for the most part, you want, ideally you want to have standardized, uh, you know, boxes. In Switzerland, we often uh, use the banana cardboard boxes that, that, the, uh, that the stores use when they receive bananas and sometimes they give them away so you can get, get them for free, it's very convenient. And if you have all boxes of the same size or similar size, uh, you know, same size is very easy to put in the in the truck when you're moving your stuff, and the same weight or not going over a certain weight is important so you don't hurt your friends and they are comfortable carrying them. So it's a very, also very important planning, um, planning uh, step in your in your move, and in, in the equivalent in software is breaking your problem in smaller parts. You want to create a big uh, software thing or a complicated, complex software thing. We need to break that into smaller parts of the right size. And we usually use tickets to do that in software, but the, it's very much the same thing, you know, breaking down your problem into small manageable parts. And you don't forget to label these things. <laughs> if you if you have ever, ever done a move where people didn't label the, the boxes, it's a mess. You know, then you have to ask, maybe open the box to see what's in it to find out where it goes in the new flat. That's not convenient at all. So you have to be very careful about labeling things. Here we have a great example where, you know, it's very obvious. Sometimes you, you have old cardboard boxes from previous moves, which have old labels, so it's, it's quickly messy. So here I think we have a good example. And the goal of this is to foster loose coordination, to foster a kind of asynchronous coordination. You know, on the day, everybody will be there, but you want your people to act as autonom autonomous agents, to be, you know, look at the box, oh, this is glasses, it's fragile, it goes in the kitchen, I know what to do. You don't have to go and ask the, who's, uh, who, you know, the leader of the move exactly what to do with this box, it's obvious. And it's the same thing in software. You want to, when you create your tickets for your project or wiki pages that define uh, what to do, you have to be careful about how you label things so that they can be, uh, people can be as autonomous as possible in working on that, that step of the project. Okay, so you have done your preparation, you think you're good, and then comes the big day. You're up early in the morning waiting for your friends to show up, and uh, you know, enough planning, now you need to start doing, that's, that's when it happens. Still, you have to be careful about having the right elements so that uh, you, you'll be successful. Um, have the right tools. You need some tools maybe to disassemble some furniture. Uh, there's always been some unknowns in the new flat. Maybe something was not uh, set up properly and you need to fix things to put your, your new furniture in place. So you, be, you are careful to, you know, have the right set of tools, exactly as in software. Uh, my math teacher back in school used to say, good craftsmen have good tools. You know, to, to do a good job, you need good tools and that's important. And before your friends show up, you clean up all the sharp things. You know, you, you've been uh, preparing things in the flat, maybe disassembling some things already. There might be loose nails on the floor. You don't want people to get hurt. So you create a safe space for your team to operate exactly as, we, as you would do in software. You know, in terms of uh, people having good workstations, being an ergonomic uh, way to work, um, uh, and, you know, being a f having a friendly atmosphere, a positive atmosphere in the team, exactly the same thing. So the, the analogy with that is cleaning up the floors and making sure, sure there's no dangerous things around when your, friend, when your friends come and, uh, and start doing their work. And you provide food and beverages. Of course, this team will need to 
to drink something, to, to have something to eat during the day so they can stay productive, uh, you know, and efficient. And there's many different tastes. If you have a diverse group, you need a diverse set of food uh, so that everybody, everybody can stay happy and healthy during your, your big moving day. The analogy in software is to create a productive and sustainable environment to make sure, you know, your coworkers are fed intellectually and practically and, you know, physically and everything. So it's, uh, that's the analogy uh, I see here in the food that you provide for your friends uh, compared to providing a productive, sustainable environment for your, for your software team. And you share the plan. When your friends arrive, it's very important to orient them, to explain them how the thing is going to work, you know, how you have organized things, how you have labeled the boxes, what you shouldn't do or what you should be careful of. You know, these, these are the boxes which are fragile. They have red labels, be careful with these or don't put them in a big truck. We'll put them in a small car uh, to, to be more careful about them and so on. There's many things that for you might be obvious, but for your friends, maybe, maybe they, they did different moves with different people and they have different ideas of how, how this should go. So you have to, to explain, you know, what's your vision of how things are going to go, how to find information and make sure everybody has the same information. That's a problem that I see often in software projects where everybody has a different piece of the information and, and they don't have the overview and it can be very hard then to coordinate, especially if you have to do this asynchronously. So sharing the plan, here we do it, uh, you know, speaking to your friends, but it can also be in written form. There's many, many ways of, of doing that. And then it starts, people start moving things, you know, you can, uh, at some point you have to stop talking and start doing. And maybe when your friends arrive, someone has a great idea. Yeah, I think we should do it like that. Or maybe we should think about a better way to go uh, to the other place, you know, a better route or something. Um, it's good. But at some point you, okay, now it's 9 a.m. or it's 10 a.m. We have to, to get going. So yeah, same thing in software. If you talk for too long, you will go nowhere. So at some point you have to decide, okay, we think we have enough information to get started. So let's actually get starting and uh, get started and start carrying stuff. And you probably have some specialists in your friends. Maybe you have someone who's a carpenter, who's you know used to assembling furniture, disassembling, being careful about that. Here we see this, uh, these uh, folks with white gloves. They're very careful about how they do it. So. If you are someone who's specially good at, at doing something, you want to put them in that slot, you know, in that, that task, that's where they'll be efficient, they'll be happy. Others might be happy because they don't have to do that thing that they don't really know how to do. It's the same thing. Sometimes there's the illusion in software and, you know, among software engineers that people are interchangeable. That can be the case up to a point, but you know, it's like, or if you do soccer, you want to put people on the right spot in the field. And it's exactly the same thing. Try to take advantage of everybody's uh, specific uh, capabilities and, and skills. Um, on the other hand, you still need to be, you know, somewhat interchangeable. If one of these guys is, is sick on the day, someone will need to, to sub for them and, you know, take on their work. So you shouldn't be too, um, you know, too, too particular about, okay, this is my specialty. I only do this assembling, assembling uh, furniture. It's not good. You have to be flexible while recognizing the special, special skills of people. It is exactly the same in software once again. Okay, so, you know, you reach destination. <laughs> I, I'm not saying anything on the, the big truck and driving it. There's, there'll probably be a, a number of a number of interesting things to say, but let's skip that. And you know, you reach the de destination. Uh, now you are ready to start putting actually stuff in the new flat and, and arranging everything so it's so it's fine. And I think again, you'll probably welcome and orient people there. So you, if you're leading the, the the move, you'll be there first, and then you'll show people around. Maybe have them visit the the, the flat, the new flat, quickly. And you explain them again how it's things are set up here. For example, maybe you put sheets on the doors to explain what goes in this room, or even what what the name of this room is, so that people can match it to the labels. Uh, maybe in the rooms you have uh, signs that say here you should put uh, cardboard boxes which are still full. Here's where the bed goes, or maybe you have a plan. You know, you have your your vision of how the flat should end up. 
and and uh, and maybe you even did some plans. I don't know, but you have to communicate this vision to the people. And here, if you have a big team, this is a pretty big flat, so may, you might have a big team to move. Uh, you probably need some written explanations. You know, if people have to come to you every time they have a question, oh, where does this box go? Uh, how do we put the couch? Uh, you will waste a lot of time communicating and not actually doing work. So um, it can be very useful to have written instructions that you, you will put in the right places in the flat. And it's exactly the same in software, you know. Sometimes, uh, especially in large organizations, people do lots of meetings and they talk a lot. It's good. I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't talk, but you, the written form is extremely efficient when you need to help people to coordinate loosely or asynchronously. And it's the same here in your flat. Maybe some written instructions will help people figure out things without having to come to you all the time and ask you and then waste time in communicating. And you will check the food and beverages again. You know, people, uh, they, they have started to eat some stuff. There's some things are missing. You will make sure that there's, again, enough to keep people productive and engaged. And it's the same thing, again, in software. Uh, you know, do, creating a big software project is more like a marathon. It's uh, OK, we work sometimes in sprints, but I think the whole project is a marathon. So you need energy, you need, uh, you know, food for the people, be it in intellectual food or, or you know, uh, physical food. But in this case, you need to make sure there's enough enough fuel, I would say, to keep the people productive and engaged. So we, you will do that several times during the day, probably. And you are here to help. Even if you have written instructions, which is great, uh, there are some detailed questions that, that people need to rely, uh, you know, they, they need to count on you for. So you'll be here, you'll be available to answer questions, but you want to restrict that to the specific questions which are not covered by the, the, you know, the written instructions that, that you wrote. And that's, it's a, it's a need to find the right balance. You don't want to spend too much time doing tons of complicated written instructions, but you want to be avail available for the, the, the harder or things that are harder to explain or where you have a very specific idea. I want this thing exactly here. And so you need to be around and you I need to be, to free up your time to be available to help your team. It's the same way uh, in, a, in a software team, you know, the self-service information is needed and, and very useful, but it, it doesn't kind of do everything. You need to find when do you switch to spoken one-to-one -one or small team conversation to make sure the information and the vision is clearly communicated. So it's, it's a difficult balance to find, in a, especially in a, in a larger software project. Okay, so it's getting, you know, you're getting there. Uh, you have moved most of the furniture, uh, but then, you know, the end is very long usually. Uh, that's, you know, things go, start to slow down and there's still a lot of small things to do, which are not maybe obvious, but need to be done for the, for the job to be finished. It's not finished until it is, and how do you decide that? One very important thing that I realized when I when I go and help friends move is that you have to be to to be doing useful work all the time. Often, uh, it, when you're help, helping people move, there's many things you can do. Yes, I can carry a box. I can maybe paint this door if it needs to be painted, or I, I can reassemble this cupboard or things like that. The trick, if you want the team to be efficient, is that everybody should always be doing something useful. Maybe it's they're not what they thought they would do. Uh, maybe they'll get a bit messy by by doing the, you know the painting. Um, maybe it, it, they'll be tired in the evening. But you try to be useful all the time. Find a slot where you can do something useful. It's the same in a software project, if, especially if when you're in a crisis. Uh, you know there, there's many things to do, and then you might need to autonomously find find something that you can do. Grab a ticket, work on it, implement it, and and help you know do provide concrete help to the project that's like the, like the bees here which are very autonomous and they each do very small uh, things but together it creates something uh, much better or much larger i would say and i uh, yeah mentioned ad 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 hoc in the in the abstract of this talk and I think it fits very well in this context. You know, if you look in Wikipedia, uh, this is the uh, an excerpt of the definition from Wikipedia. It's defined by a lack of formal structure. 
of course, when you're moving house with with friends, we don't define a, a you know a master of the cupboards and a master of the boxes. You, you, it's all very loose and and there's no no formal structure, and people have to be adaptive, creative, and flexible. So so you know so it's efficient. So you're not arguing about who should do what. Just do it. You know, go. I can do that. I do it. Okay, done. Fine, and that's that's very similar to ad hoc adocracy. And uh, one thing that's, if you look at the adocracy definition, they say the cost of communication can be very high because you need to coordinate. You need, you know, you need all these uh, semi-autonomous agents. They need to coordinate for it to be to be efficient. And that's, I think, with what we define, having a clear vision, having written form explanations that people can use in self service, I think you can re grad uh, drastically reduce the cost. And that's what we see in open source projects where, uh, the, you know, the cost of communications, it's, uh, it's uh, it, you know, it's not a problem because we're used to asynchronous communication, written communication. And, and uh, I think there's, again, many parallels here. Okay, so uh, now it's really, you know, it's really getting done. Your flat looks like how you imagine it would, more or less. You think you have uh, good enough conditions to spend a night here and eat in the morning. So it's, it's, you know, it's getting good. And it's important to decide when to stop. You know, when is good enough? I'm not sure if this picture would be good enough for all of us. But maybe, you know, if your flat still looks like that, but your bedroom is ready, you can sleep, you, the kitchen is good enough so you can eat in the morning, you can take care of that later. And, and good enough might be different from one person to the, uh, to the other, but it's very important to define when it's good enough and you don't want to, this to drag on and your friends to get, you know, tired and angry. Oh, this is, you know, this is really uh, lasting too long, it doesn't work. So you will have to define what is good enough. and as in software, nothing's ever 100% finished. At some point, you need to let go and say, okay, this is good enough. It, it fulfills the criteria, uh, even if it's not perfect uh, everywhere, and we, we can go on. So again, a strong parallel here. And then you will have to invite people to stop, and some of them will not be willing to stop. They say, no, you know, I can still arrange this carpet, or can uh, the, the painting here, the you know, the painted door, I can do another layer. Or, they say, no, no, it's good enough. We stop, and now we have to celebrate. You know, uh, it's important as well. When you finished, um, you, you want, you know, it, you did great things with your friends, and you have to celebrate and enjoy it. Maybe someone's bringing pizza or some other food, and, and you have a good time. You know, after all this hard work, you need a reward, you need to, to rejoice together. It's the same thing in software teams. You know, when you reach good milestones, it's great to have a celebration. Uh, whatever you can do in these days of, of COVID and, and physical distance. But there's many cool things that you can do, and it's important to, to do them. And in the end of, you know, at the end of the day, you are probably very tired about all this preparation, all this coordination, all this, this work. And, uh, but you're very happy, you know, we made it. Uh, it doesn't come for free. It was a big effort and you, you put the effort in, you, you did your best and you find ways to make things work. And then you can be, can be very happy about it. And that's it. Uh, you know, it worked. We moved. It's sometimes, if you looked at the pile of stuff that you had to move, and you said by by myself, it would be impossible. But your friends showed up, and you made it, and you organized it, and you coordinated. And if you do it in a way that people can be autonomous agents, more or less, it will be much more en enjoyable and much more efficient. So I think there are many parallels between moving house and creating software projects. Hope this. Simple principles can help you remember what we can do to make our software projects better and more efficient. And we see a lot of that in the open source uh, communities, you know, that um, many of these techniques uh, and principles are in, in everyday, you know, they are applied in, in open source communities. And, you know, it also works in large organizations, companies, whatever. You can really use the same principles. So I hope this analogy has been interesting to you and it, it you know it will hopefully help you remember how to structure and organize your projects to be to be more efficient. Uh, we have four minutes I think left for questions so um, 
Um, Alexander, if you have any, I'm happy to take them. Hey, Bertrand, so it's Josh here. I'm going to uh, field any questions. We're just waiting for some hi, questions hi, Josh. to come in. Uh, and uh, Kevin from the chat just mentions uh, it's like minimum viable product as applied to moving house, uh, which seems, yeah, the analogy seems to work. It works for me as I'm listening to this. I can totally see it. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I actually have a, a quick question myself where mm -hmm. um, I, I joined a distributed company, so I work for Elastic. Uh, I joined a distributed company, and what I noticed coming from a, a normal company um, was that there really was a lot of uh, optimizing for uh, these autonomous agents. Yep. And you talk a lot about the balance between you know making sure that there's there's still a team and there's team support. I'm wondering if you have any tips for what's a good way to find that balance to not have you know people working at home or in their corner alone, completely alone and isolated from the team versus what you may find in a, a more traditional uh, in, in situ team where everything is actually optimized for team function and, and kind of group think. What are some ways that you found that can you can strike a good balance between these two? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think a nice way of, of um, you know, I think the way we, uh, we like to work when we're doing creative work is as a team. You know, I, I love the brainstorming sessions when you're all in the same room and you have whiteboards and, and you, you collaborate with that. Uh, it's very hard to do in a, in a purely, purely a remote setting. I think the nice way is to alternate between periods where, okay, okay, you are at home, you're, you're, you know, you can organize as, uh, how, however you want, you're working alone or maybe in teams of two or three on your stuff. And then a phase is when you get together with a larger team. And there's many ways to organize like virtual hackathons today. Uh, we did that in my in my team, in my company a few a few weeks ago, where we everybody would work would work in their corner, but we had two short meetings, morning and afternoon. And so beginning and end of the day to come together and one someone will explain what they've been doing, demonstrate and that. So I think it made for a good balance of being quiet on your own and efficient, and then having some social interaction, some social aspect. One fun thing that we did was um, each team had to find a name for their team. And on, on one of the days in these daily uh, short meetings, we had to wear something that that matched that matches the name of your team. So we were my team. We were the Mad Hatters. So we were wearing crazy hats for this meeting, and it, it you know it reproduced a bit of the of the social interaction. But I think alternating between alone time and group time as much as we can uh, can help for that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That really strikes a chord with me being an introvert, as I think many distributed workers are. It's nice to have that mix uh, of the two of them. So somebody uh, on the chat asks, um, uh, this is a question from Malvika. Uh, what happens when this group of friends do this kind of move on a regular basis? Can they build a government <laughs> governance structure of decision making? Well, that's an interesting question. So I, I never had the same groups of friends twice. So they they are they are always different, and I think that's 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 a big advantage of that. And maybe we need to to reproduce that in our teams. If you, if you have always the same team, things tend to solidify, and then you know exactly how the other other one is going to react. That make things sometimes harder. So I think it's good to have some rotation, or maybe or maybe if you do these workshops that we were discussing, invite invite someone who's totally strange. You know, you know who's a total stranger to your team, and and I think they they can bring bring some fresh ideas. And that's what so I see when moving wall. houses. Yes, no, yeah. uh, some even someone who can be active. You know, help. Okay. They have to know a bit of the techniques, but maybe from different group or different culture. So so you know, mixing up mix things up. I would say. 